Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about cryptocurrency news and specifically we're going to delve into hodlers are not selling their Bitcoin or their cryptocurrency. The people who have bought Bitcoin over the last number of months or years and have been you know, the number of addresses that have been holding Bitcoin for a year or more, those addresses are not selling their Bitcoin. And so it's very interesting that even though we've had such a, a financial crisis, a, a upturn of the financial world and stock markets and everything else, that the majority of the people that are selling and pushing the price down are people that have been holding a year or less. But we're going to dig into that. Cryptocurrency ratings uh, on coin market cap, they're now including a rating. So how did your favorite cryptocurrency rank? And Venezuela shuts down all, read that again, all of their banks and Bitcoin trading soars. I've read recently a number of articles that were saying, well, see, Bitcoin is not a safe haven asset. Look how it dropped with the rest of the stock market. But gold has always been considered a safe haven asset, and yet gold had a similar drop. And so to say that Bitcoin is not a safe haven asset because it dropped would also say gold is not a safe haven asset. I don't think the logic holds, holds true. I think we've seen a unique situation in the world today that has never happened before and we're trying to figure things out and so it maybe it shouldn't be surprising that that cryptocurrency the cryptocurrency market uh, took a tank the same way everything else did so that's kind of a brief overview let's get right into it crypto investing ideas to help you take profits and avoid losses that's what our channel is all about can we get 99 likes on this video? Smash the like button. It helps us out tremendously. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. So, record Bitcoin price volatility fails to unnerve hodlers. Bitcoin's price volatility has surged to record highs, but the long-term investors popularly known as hodlers don't seem to be deterred. So this chart here is a chart that measures the volatility of an asset. In this particular case, they're looking at Bitcoin. And also, you know, we, we are talking about Bitcoin in particular, but everything that we say about Bitcoin applies to the entire cryptocurrency industry. Whether you're thinking about Ethereum or Link or... Uh, XRP or Ripple or Zeller, uh, a Stellar or any of the other cryptocurrencies out there, there's hundreds of them. The entire market has crashed along with the stock market and, and the rest of the financial world. And so, so it, it wasn't just isolated to just cryptocurrency, it's affected uh, virtually everything. So while Bitcoin's price is down 40% on a month to date basis, the number of hodlers or addresses holding coins for over a year remains near the record high of 18.68 million reached in February. As of March 16th, there were 18.21 million addresses holding Bitcoin for more than 12 months, according to data provided by the blockchain intelligence firm Into the Block. They see any drop in price as a mere speed bump, and, and they're talking about what's the attitude of people that are hodlers that are holding on to their Bitcoin, and the people that are holding on to their Bitcoin see any drop in price as a mere speed bump on the road leading to where Bitcoin's value pro, both in utility and price is substantially larger than what it has been seen to date. When Banks are shut down, Bitcoin is open. When ATMs are closed, Bitcoin is cash. When governments print unfathomable sums of cash, Bitcoin cannot be debased. In other words, what they mean by debased is there's a fixed 
and, and programmed limit to the amount of Bitcoin that will ever get created. Today we have approximately 18 million Bitcoins that have been minted, that have been mined, and the maximum that will ever be mined is 21 million. Um, and it'll take a long time before we actually hit that number because of the way that the program Bitcoin has been designed, it's going to slow down the amount of Bitcoin that's mined on an annual basis. Right now, every block, and a block is created about every 10 minutes, um, every block creates a miner's reward of about 12 and a half Bitcoin or 12.25 Bitcoin. Um, and coming in the middle of May, that gets cut in half and will become 6.25 Bitcoin for every block that's mined. And so because of that diminishing rewards to the miners, the, the scarcity of Bitcoin will continue to increase. Now with the next halvening happening in May, the scarcity of Bitcoin according to the stock to flow ratio is going to be very close to equivalent to gold. The next Bitcoin halvening, which will happen sometime around 2024, it takes about every four years before halvening actually occurs. So the next halvening in four years, 2024, will further reduce Bitcoin down to 3.75 Bitcoins per block. And when that happens, Bitcoin will have a scarcity greater than that of gold based on the stock to flow ratios. And so hodlers are for the most part, not macro traders, but are ordinary retail investors with a very long-term perspective. And when they talk about a long-term perspective, we're not talking decades, but we're talking four years, eight years, um, maybe even 12 years down the road, is the perspective that a lot of ordinary retail investors have with Bitcoin. And they're expecting to see those investments go up dramatically over that period of time. And so that's why in even with this huge 40% drop, this 40% drop on a month-to-month -month basis, the number of people that are holding Bitcoin just hasn't been phased at all. I mean, you can see this blue mark showed, showing the number of Bitcoin addresses that have held Bitcoin for a year or longer, and they've just con continued to grow. They've continued to grow. And most of those addresses are addresses holding small amounts of Bitcoin. In many cases, they're holding fractions of a single Bitcoin. Um, you know, uh, I've mentioned this in other videos before, but I'm going to dig into it for just a second because some people don't realize this. You do not have to buy a whole Bitcoin. The smallest denomination of a Bitcoin is called a Satoshi, and there's one. it takes 100 million Satoshis to equal one Bitcoin. Said in another way, uh, 114 Satoshis equals one U.S. penny. And that was when Bitcoin was at a price of, of $10,000. So at today's price, it's going to be closer to 200 Satoshis equal one U.S. penny, somewhere in that ballpark. I didn't do the math because I didn't even think about it until just now that I would even delve into that. But uh, the, a lot of these addresses do not hold a whole Bitcoin. They hold fractions of a Bitcoin. All right, so CoinMarketCap launches crypto briefings, digital assets, ratings. How does your favorite cryptocurrency rate? Um, in, la in the latest partnership, CoinMarketCap adds crypto briefings, digital asset ratings to their platform, giving investors access to fundamental analysis alongside price and volume data. Symmetry Crypto Briefing's institutional-grade research product, positioned and priced for the retail investor, provides in-depth fundamental analysis and unbiased, detailed insights into cryptocurrency projects. Each project is concluded with a concise investment grade, now available to tens of millions of users on CoinMarketCap. So CoinMarketCap is a website that if you're doing any kind of research into a cryptocurrency before you decide whether or not you invest in it, CoinMarketCap is a great place for you to do that research. And one of the things that they just added as of today 
is this symmetry ratings. And so as you can see here, uh, they actually give a letter grade to the cryptocurrency and then they break it down into further details such as market opportunity, underlying technology, ecosystem structure, core team, token economics, token performance, and roadmap progress. Um, and so they actually go into quite a bit of detail. Crypto briefing, token insight, and into the block are highly respected in the industry for their informative and in-depth offerings, and I'm sure our users will benefit greatly from their valuable dating and ratings, said CoinMarketCap Chief Strategy Officer uh, Carolyn Chan. By incorporating fundamental analysis and easy to understand digital assets grade, it allows investors to look past price and volume data to get a more holistic or a more complete view of the market. Crypto Briefing has systematically reported on and evaluated hundreds of digital assets. Our connections and expertise allow us to provide valuable recommendations to investors. So let's go to CoinMarketCap's website. You do not have to subscribe or pay to use CoinMarketCap. And when you come over here, you can put in any cryptocurrency symbol that you want, whether it's, you know, BTC. And as you type, it gives you a list of options, a list of uh, cryptocurrencies that meet the letters that you've typed in so far. And so it actually helps you locate whatever cryptocurrency that you have an interest in. Now, once you're on the website, the first page that chops up pops up is this one with the charts. And so you can immediately see a chart for that particular cryptocurrency. And that chart is uh, tends to be a long-term chart. In this case, this is Bitcoin, and it goes all the way back um, to May 19th of 2013, and also goes all the way up to today's price. And so you can see the pricing action of that particular cryptocurrency for most of its lifetime. Some of the other tabs on here is market pairs, social tools, historical data, but ratings is the one that we're talking about in particular. And then there's also a tab for on-chain analysis. The bottom line is, is by navigating to CoinMarketCap, you can get a lot of free information about any particular cryptocurrency. Market pairs is not kind of obvious, but basically market pairs will give you information about what exchanges will trade that particular cryptocurrency. And that can be a very, very important thing. You may be looking at a cryptocurrency that has your interest because you've heard good things about it on the internet, but you want to check out where you can trade it, uh, buy and sell it on what exchanges because those exchanges may not be available to you where you live, or if you can get into and create an account on those exchanges, some of them are not the best exchanges to be putting your money on. And so um, it gives you an opportunity to see where you need to go if you want to purchase and trade that particular cryptocurrency, as well as a whole host of additional information. But let's go to the ratings tab in particular since that's what we're talking about uh, today. But I just wanted you to know, hey, there's a whole bunch of stuff out here for whatever cryptocurrency. And so the ratings includes this fundamental crypto asset score. And you'll see kind of a chart from ranging from red all the way up to green. And then it tends to give you a health in terms of a letter grade for the cryptocurrency you're looking at. You can see here that Bitcoin is not the top contender. In fact, for whatever reason, they've chosen Ethereum as their top contender, but there are also a couple of coins down here that have exceeded Bitcoin. And then they have what they're calling the FCAS trend and a link so that you can find out more about what is the FCAS. And then here's where they show that report. The report gives you a letter grade and then ranks all of these different aspects of that particular cryptocurrency. And then down here, they give you additional information about that cryptocurrency. And so you can see here that if you want to dive deep into any particular cryptocurrency, that CoinMarketCap is a great place to do that. We will put a link so that you can navigate directly to CoinMarketCap in the description for this video on the YouTube channel. So just navigate to the YouTube channel 
click on the description and you'll be able to find the link directly to coin market cap and then in conclusion venezuela shuts down banks amid panic bitcoin trading soars and so venezuela has enacted a nationwide quarantine to fight the corn coronavirus pandemic as a result, every bank in the country has now closed. And meanwhile, trading volume on peer-to-peer -peer exchanges has increased over the last two weeks. Um, and so despite only having 33 cases of coronavirus throughout Venezuela, President Nicolas Maduro today placed the entire country under quarantine to prevent the spread of the deadly virus. And in compliance with Maduro's decree, the entire national banking system has shut its doors for an indefinite period of time. Meanwhile, Bitcoin... Oh, we got cut off. Anyway, Bitcoin is soaring down there in, in Venezuela because they can no longer have access to the banking system. And so if you are doing your banking electronically, you're to a certain degree okay but not everybody in Venezuela was doing their banking electronically. And so shutting down all of the banks has, had, has created a significant issue for a lot of Venezuelan citizens. And as a result, uh, they've been turning to other options. News of bank closures, however, appears to have been mostly shrugged off by the Venezuelan public. Now, isn't that interesting? The banks close and people just don't care. Cash shortages, a dependence on the U.S. dollar, and a wanting technological, technological infrastructure have led Venezuelans to dispense with traditional banking services. For years, an informal economy in Venezuela has thrived, with most people sticking to cash when available, barter, gold in the southern regions of the country, and crypto among a small but growing segment of the population. In fact, Latin America, the, the usage of, of cryptocurrency, primarily Bitcoin, um, has been growing faster in Latin America than it has been in the United States. But it's because in Latin America, they have a hair on fire problem, and that's called their banking system. Not only has Venezuela got issues with their banking system, but many Latin America countries have issues with their currency their banking systems, and corruption. And those three things have driven a lot of Latin American citizens to use things like Bitcoin, gold, bartering, and other forms of transacting um, because the currency just wasn't working out for them. It wasn't a good idea to use it. And so they had a hair on fire problem called, I need to buy food, I need to buy groceries, I need to buy... Um, you know, shelter and, and water and all of these other necessities, how am I going to do that? And so they've resorted to other things in order to get the necessities in life. And as a result, the usage of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies has soared much faster uh, in terms of the population adopting cryptocurrency in Latin America than the population adopting cryptocurrency in the United States and, and other similar countries. But depending on what happens with uh, you know, the global health issues that we're all facing right now, we mod big modern countries could see similar issues coming their way as well. You know, if the US government continues to flood money into the banking system, it will cause significant inflation and will cause a devaluation of the U.S. dollar, which could cause people to seek other alternatives for uh, purchasing goods and services. In fact, Bitcoin trading volume on the peer-to-peer -peer exchange local Bitcoins is currently experiencing its biggest surge of the year. At the end of February, volume stood at around 491 Bitcoins. By last week, that figure had increased to 540 Bitcoins. That trumps the volume of Bitcoins traded in U.S. dollars on the same platform, which closed the week at 479 uh, Bitcoins. And so 
the what they're talking about here is there's a service called local bitcoins and how that works is you set up a, a, a thing on local bitcoin saying hey i want to buy some bitcoin and you're going to pay with cash or you're going to pay with chickens or you're going to barter or whatever you have to offer and uh, the other party will say well i'll give you x amount of bitcoin for that and when the two parties come into agreement they'll go somewhere and meet face to face and they'll exchange whatever, whether it's money or, uh, or barter, they'll exchange those goods and then local Bitcoins will handle the transfer of the Bitcoin to the, to the party that's purchasing it. And so it's called a peer to peer, but really what they're talking about is it's set up so that you can do face to face transactions in order to acquire Bitcoin. And the usage of that, as you can see, is skyrocketing and has gone up dramatically. In fact, the usage in Venezuela has exceeded the usage in the United States in the last week or so. And part of that is being caused because Venezuela has shut down all of their banks. And so in this case, we have evidence of Bitcoin being a safe haven asset. As always, I'll put links to all of these articles in the description. In the meantime, how can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Is there something that you want to cover? Want me, you know, it, it, do you have any questions that you want to ask me? Was there something that I covered that was confusing or that you want me to uh, answer, uh, you know, like give you more information about? Or do you just flat out disagree with something I said? I invite your polite disagreements in the comments below. Look, you know things I don't know. I know things you don't know. And we can grow smarter together when we politely share with each other what we do know. And so I invite your polite disagreements in the comments below. In the meantime, like, subscribe, and hodl. And I hope that you have a fantastic day.